people have mysteriously vanished in America's wilderness. Join us as we dive into the deep end of the unexplainable and try to piece together what happened. You are listening to Locations Unknown. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Locations Unknown. I'm your co-host, Joey. Right on with me, as always, is a man who never kinks a slinky, Mike Van de Bogart. <laughs> uh, thank you, Joe, and thank you once again uh, to everyone tuning in. I'm going to try to go through this uh, pretty quick because we have uh, an amazing guest lined up for all of you here shortly. So just before we get rolling here, just want to thank some Patreon shoutouts. Uh, Holly Eckland, Mary Eversole, Taylor Qu- uh, Quillian, Devin uh, Hartzler, Emily Parman, and Emily Revels. So thank you so much for supporting the show. Uh, without you, this kind of stuff wouldn't be possible. And um, you can always support the show through you know any of our stores, um, YouTube memberships, premium subscriptions on Apple. Um, you can also call the show. Uh, if you want to leave a voicemail after this episode and tell us how great it was, you can call 208-391-6913 and leave a voicemail. Yeah, we'll, we'll play anything. So if <laughs> yeah. you are calling after you've been drinking at the bar, any yes. of that, we do all those supporter shows. They're a blast. So feel free to call the number. If you have complaints, definitely call the number. Let us know what you don't like, and uh, we'll have a good time with it. So um, the, the guest we have coming up here, um, Joe, do you want to just mention him quickly and then... Sure. Uh, we'll get rolling. Sure. So what we're going to do, he's sitting backstage right now. Uh, we have Evan B. Stone, a director, editor, director of photography on a lot of shows that you might be aware of. Uh, an example of some of them, Expedition Unknown, Destination Truth, Finding Bigfoot, Ghost Nation, Naked and Afraid. What was the one he said just before? that? Mutual you... of Omaha, Animal Kingdom. Yes. Uh, and, and a bunch more. He'll talk about it. But we're going to play his uh, real introducing himself, and then we're going to bring him on in the background after that. So without further ado, here is the intro of Evan B. Stone. What's up, everyone? Evan B. Stone, Music Cube. I'm a world-class adventurer and cinematographer. Basically, I go around the world and capture the adventure of travel. I specialize in really extreme stuff. The is terrible in here. You okay? Really intense. Like diving. That's a plane, unbelievable! Climbing. The whole wall is literally just disintegrating. Back up, back up, back up. Back up. Anything that feels a little dangerous. That goes all the way down to the ocean level. Yes, almost 200 feet. It's opening up into a chamber. The viewer wants to be in the action. And that's what I give them. This is the definition of madness. These remote locations can be breathtakingly beautiful, but also just as deadly. Here we go. Hey, hey. Just found a landmine back there. One more down, four or five million to go. Fire now. Anything can happen in these remote and exotic locations. Be a angry looking bro. And sometimes they do. Look over there on the other side. Wait, 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 wait. What I've learned in this business is keep shooting no matter what. How are you? All right. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Uh, Bill. Bill? Yes. You don't look like a Bill. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little touch and go there for a minute. This is what travel is all about. And capturing that essence is my job. The 
This is the craziest welcome I've ever seen. I mean, I assume it's a welcome. I could be murdered in the next 10 minutes. I don't know. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Lay. We have Evan on now. Evan, you have the coolest resume <laughs> of anybody I've ever met in my entire yeah, life. That was amazing. Yeah, it's it's good being an editor and a cinematographer and a shooter because uh, you can just make everything look dope. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not like you fake that stuff either, though. So it looks fantastic. And, uh, you know, we were talking offline before we started. He he's been a part of since beginning one of my favorite shows on TV, Expedition Unknown. Um, I've been watching it for years. I'm going to have to restart it now because uh, it's been on. How many seasons has it been on now? It's 11 now, 11 yeah. seasons. And uh, we're, it's a new season going on right now. And I'm joining them in about a month in December. And uh, it's it's an amazing show. It, it um, I'm surprised it hasn't won an Emmy or something because some of our episodes, uh, especially the three-part series on like the afterlife mm -hmm. or first humans is really, really, really good. Uh, good television, good storytelling. And here we are. You know, this this particular topic topic we're talking about, I didn't know anything about until I got the assignment <laughs> to go on <laughs> yeah. on it. I mean, it's I'm like it's like um, you know, I, I get the job, uh, I get on a plane, I open up the the dossier and it's like this is what we're doing this month and it's like oh mind blowing you know it's always like a oh, nazi treasure or you know omaha bay diving omaha beach or you know just something i've never thought about and then once i got into this story i mean it's like a it's like a russian doll thing it just keeps new things just keep popping up until you just like i don't know <laughs> it's crazy so this this yeah. is how we initially connected was um through a mutual friend of ours uh that used to do some filming of them when they're back doing sweet uh underground biker gang stuff in in florida and um what we're talking about is our 14th episode that we covered is the dyatlov pass in russia uh very incredible story uh it's it's got all the the Things in it that you'd probably seen in X-Files movie, uh, potential government cover-ups, unexplained things happening in the wilderness. Uh, it's really neat. So you had the opportunity to actually go there and and see some of the things that the, the students have. Do you want to give a, a brief overview of just high level what yeah. the DLF Pass incident is? And then yeah. we can kind of go through your timeline of your uh, adventure going out there and investigating what potentially occurred. Yeah, this is Russia's one of their biggest mysteries. This is like their JFK kind of conspiracy. Uh, nine hikers um, who are Eagle Scouts in their own uh, world uh, went out on a, a winter hike to get a certificate and never came back. When they were found, there were was very unusual circumstances. Uh, they got they ripped out of their own tents uh, from the inside and their bodies were scattered around. Uh, one of them had no eyes and no tongue, uh, fractured skulls, uh, but I'll talk all about it. I mean, it's just like, and it was minus 30 there. Uh, so we decided to go back the same time of year and go retrace their steps and maybe come out with something different. Um, so right here, you're looking at their actual artifacts from these missing hikers. Um, and that's, and I got access, all this stuff, the photos, uh, their flashlights, and here they are, a bunch of young college students with their whole life ahead of them, uh, very expert uh, survivalists. I mean, when you're Russian, you're pretty much, especially up in Siberia area, you, you're a different breed. You're tough as nails. Oh, absolutely. I'm surprised, I'm surprised they're smiling because <laughs> in, Russia, in Russia, no one smiles, This is, but this is in the 60s um, and their late uh, 50s, 59. Um, and uh that's why all the good ufc fighters come out of russia they're just, just they're built different <laughs> no smiles no smiles yeah so you have here, to be here are the books you know we so anyhow we started expedition unknown for folks who don't know is a show about mysteries of the world um it's unsolved cases it's nazi gold it's spirits and bigfoot sometimes um and it's usually we go there when it's new evidence and this time we did go there with because there was new evidence, um, that's their diary right there. And that unlocks a lot of really clues on not what happened to them, but what kind of people they were. Mm -hmm. um, and they had to 
detail everything because to get their certificate, they had to take a lot of photos. They had, they had to tell uh, in their journal. This is men and women. Um, in the clothing then, they made themselves. It's all wool, uh, you know, late 50s stuff uh, that is tried and true. Believe me, uh, people have climbed Everest with that stuff. And here they are, you know. Um, so it's a sad story. Um, they got, uh, I think, murdered. M maybe it, it, it just when you when you when everyone in your when your audience hears the series of events that went down, I want to make a survey on what y'all think it is. Uh, so here we are. Okay. You know, we, yeah, let's just set it off. We're starting in Yekaterinburg, and this place is cold. I mean, it's uh, about a size of um, uh, Dallas, Texas, as far as people is concerned. But you wouldn't know it because everyone's inside. It is cold, cold, and uh, that's a lake right there. And uh, there's someone walking across it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was mine. Oh, wow! Okay. They just shoveled out a uh, like a, a yeah. almost like a pathway across the lake. That's Michael Jackson, by the way. And for why there's a statue, <laughs> why there's a statue there, I have no idea. And uh, they, it's they love American culture, you know. Um, also, these hats are a big thing, so of course we try them on. That's yeah. what we do. We have a little fun. That's our sound man, Mike and Josh Gates, uh, who is the master of ceremonies on uh, executive producer. Uh, so we get there, and you know, that's me filming uh, at a military kind of. Uh, historical uh, museum. Um, so it's a, it's so you started at it's a it's a historical museum for military. Yeah. yeah okay. I have those here too. Um, to kind of set the table of what's going on here at the time. And look at that's a soldier with an AK forty seven and a mask, a gas mask. This is their hero. This is <laughs> yeah. you know. Hey, you know it's it's rough there and. Yeah. Uh, so we're talking about this city's on the border of um, uh, Siberia. It's right on the border, and uh, from here it's the hinterland. Uh, this um, the town. When okay, so let's just kind of set the table here. Okay, nine hikers left February early February, nineteen fifty nine, and never came back. Okay. Uh, these are sons and daughters of this town. Um, was, and when they were deemed dead, it was a big, big uh, grievance. You know, it, the whole the whole town kind of felt it. But the government um, and the town were just as were people finding out, they were covering it up, covering up. They didn't want a big deal of it. Um, again, got to put it in perspective. It's 1959. It's the beginning of the Cold War. Uh, information was being is guarded anything. Uh, sure. So, you know, whether the cover up or this is business as usual to keep the public um, calm or just no, no nothing going on. Um, only until after the Cold War till this story really come out. Um, so that's a little perspective there. Um, these hikers died in a very bizarre fashion. Um, let's see. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to pull the pictures up real quick because there we go. Yeah. So here they are. Look, there's faces to these folks. These are mm -hmm. folks that, you know, could be Oops, sorry. my friend or your friend. Right. Sure. Um, and the person, the gentleman on the far left, they named, the mountain after him, Dotloff. Uh, yeah, was he? He was the leader of the group, correct? I I just yeah. listened to the episode again. It was our fourteenth episode. That so was three years ago. We did it, yeah. so I had to listen yeah. to it again to get all the details. But they they weren't just I mean just regular hikers. They were experienced. They knew yeah. what to do in this type of climate. They've done it before. Um, I believe we were talking about it was Dyatlov's friend uh, who was supposed to go on the trip too. Um, didn't go there was some reason he couldn't make it but he said they had done the exact same trip in the exact same place i think the year prior and the conditions were significantly worse and they they were just fine so they oh, knew yeah. what they were doing out there yeah these are equivalent to eagle scouts and they're and i think in that town there's no internet and nothing like that you you get your these badges of honor so to speak or hugely important to these folks yeah they're gonna they all were studying um architecture and 
and you know other things but their whole life right there was to go to this pass now this area that they're talking about is super remote it took them five days just to get there they used snowshoes and they went to, they went in february because they wanted it that cold because one of the routes that they took is on a river a fast moving river they needed it to be frozen so they can get on it and just take a beeline and that's what they did so that's why would you go in the winter well for one for the certification two it's really the right way to go and you know what they ever you know what they say i'm sure they said it in russian there's no such thing as bad weather just bad clothing <laughs> yeah <laughs> well they had to say you know they're doing their thing so they weren't worried about dying out there frostbite right um mm -hmm. yeah so and that's pretty crazy because i was you know, <laughs> for sure. I can imagine. I was like, ah, right. So, how um, cold was it when you were there? It's minus thirty up on the pass. So, Ooh. yeah. And, so that uh, was right around the temperature that they had logged, correct? Yeah, that's right. We, is, we kinda, is, so you were in similar conditions that they yeah. were experiencing. Yes, we retraced their steps, and we were on snowmobiles, uh, and we took it took us three days to get up there. Um, so, um, and we took stops, and that's a. Uh, uh, that's we we started uh, with a strange uh, truck that brought us out to the border town, um, and that's it right there. Um, and um, you could see it in that. And one of my video clips I put up, I think it's like transportation or getting there. It's number two. Okay, um, yeah, I'll pull that but, up while you're um, talking. Before we get too much, well, what's why? How do these hikers die? People ask, right? Well, um, one had their eye. They were found out of their tent, ripped open, all at once, barely dressed, okay, scattered, okay, a uh, mile away, a uh, mile and a half away, on the tree line, and they had uh, no shoes or very limited clothing on um, when they were found. Um, one of them had their eyes and their mouth, uh, their tongue taken out, uh, smashed um, skull on two of them, um, and then the sternum was, was broken on one of them. So uh, big mystery in what happened up there, okay? And a lot of people want to know what happened, and it's not clear. Uh, and the evidence is is all over the place. Um, some people think it's UFOs. Some people think it's military uh, stuff, you know? Um, but to get there uh, out of Yekaterinburg, we took this train. This is like Snowpiercer, this train. I mean, it is cold. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, right. Yeah. And, that's that's our crew. We're all happy in the beginning. We're gonna have a new adventure, you know. And it's <laughs> like, and you know, this woman picks us up in their mink coat, but you know, she's hard. You can't have no smiles from her. No yeah. I mean, if, if, you, if you smile in Russia, they think something's wrong with you for real, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's it's a journey to even get almost there, right? And then I'm once sure. you start the journey, you trust these Russian folks who live up there. Yeah, and you that's yeah, the, yeah. yeah, that that's the river right there that we went up. Um, okay, so you, I wouldn't even guess it's a river, it just looks like a clearing, but that's just snow on a frozen river that you guys are taking uh right. snowmobiles across. Yeah, that's right. Now, you see if it's a river, you can say, Yeah, it totally is a river, and you see another little estuary, uh, little tributary on the left, mm -hmm. uh, and it's snaking around, snaking around these really tall cliffs, right? Um, and we were all had uh snowmobiles uh i of course was filming uh on the back looking the other backwards you know things like that flying the drone as a, as i'm on the back sometimes um and um so i didn't know when i was just gonna get just gonna crash or something but i had a russian guy driving and he's you trust those guys i'm telling you these these guys from russia they you you just feel like they they'll save you you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> help and they'll just yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, don't it. worry american friend yeah. i've got you drink vodka right, so. <laughs> yeah yeah and you know what if you ever go to russia don't bring vodka bring jack daniels that's oh. what they want that's what oh they really want. Mm -hmm. they, okay you know, we, we brought them oh, here's some vodka they're like what where's the jack daniels and i was like of course yeah they, they've got all the vodka they could ever need yeah <laughs> and the vodka up there is just like white water it's just like oh, you know and they, yeah but anyhow so we wanted to find out um, what went on with these hikers and 
all the different things that could have happened, we chased down those leads. We started in the uh, college that they went to, and there's, we, um, there was an expert there uh, who brought out all these artifacts of them and really kind of set the table for us. Uh, but also, he brought out a piece of military material um, and it was um, part of, it was, uh, it was from the time period, it was found uh, uh, near that area, um, and he believes it to be a military, part of a military missile or some sort of weapon. Um, so we got, that's before we left, we got that information, and he actually said we can take a piece of it. <laughs> we sawed a piece off, and we sent it for testing while we went up here. So just to kind of, whoa, okay. That, that's really um, cool. Yeah. Um, this show, because it's Discovery Channel and it has such cachet, it's incredible the, the stuff we do and what we can get into. It's it's really doors just swing open for us. We don't take no for an answer. We How, you Can know, you explain, was it difficult getting permission to go into Russia to film the show? I, I don't know because I'm, yeah. I'm not the producer. The, yeah. it, it is difficult. I do know uh, you need two passports. You know, mm -hmm. I, so one gets held up. Well, I have two. One gets held up uh, in their world, and then you're traveling the world with the rest of it. Um, and um, you know, money talks, right? Yeah, cash. sure. Yeah, packets of cash. Who knows? You know, um, that, that's how you do it when you're outside of the U.S. Um, you, you obviously set it all up. Um, you can't just go roading up there and yeah. filming. You know, you, no. And I imagine. Um, um, this is obviously prior to what's happened over there in recent yeah, the stuff that's going on now. The recent years. So yeah, it's um it's still pretty amazing that you were able to get the access you had. Yep, yep. And and we were really into some conspiracy uh, stuff in, on, in their yeah, world. Super. Yeah. So this yeah. is the start of your expedition. This is the video you shared. Okay, those are the trucks that you took. Yeah. I'm assuming they all have to be built super hardy because yeah, they're just only operating in the tr most treacherous conditions. Yeah. I mean, this is like a little mini tank, you know, <laughs> it actually has a heater, the heater inside and uh, wait till a couple of pictures is actually a wood burning stove inside this thing. <laughs> I know it's crazy. Uh, yeah. You see that little uh, exhaust at top on the, on the back. Oh, wow. So it, you get in and it's freezing. And you're like, what do we do? Oh yeah, there it and is. You, you put wood in this fire pit. And you and you just and you laugh and you go okay it makes sense it wasn't coming in and you were kind of toasty and then it got too toasty you know and then you get yeah. out and you're like it all freezes right but this truck brought us um, all the way to uh, our, our jump off point where we got the uh, um, the snowmobiles and we got our two experts there. Um, and our two experts were uh, Mike Lebeth Lebecki, uh, who's a climber, this guy on the left there, uh, and an expedition leader on his own right for big mountain peaks, and uh, Teddy Hajiska, who pretty much wrote the book on this conspiracy theory. She's never actually been there, though. She's uh, you know, an on, uh, online sleuth, and we took her there, <laughs> and it was something else. So you know, we took this down all these, there she is. Her name is Teddy. She's amazing. She is a firecracker. She's out there. Right, good. For, yeah. Good for her. She just jumped yeah. right in. I mean, I could imagine if you dedicate your, all your time to this and you have the actual opportunity to go do it, that'd be an incredible thing to do. Yeah. She got the call, right? People get yep. the call. Sometimes you're an expert, at something you're the best at something. Well, sometimes people call and, uh, she did and she was valuable. And the expedition leader, the uh, other uh, person, Mike, um, he was our expert, and he was a climber, an expedition leader. He was wanting to know what happened to them as a cautionary tale to other climbers or what happened because he could happen to him maybe. you know. So he was really vet, had a vested interest in finding out what was going on because of his mountaineering uh, you know, uh, expertise and his leadership skills in the wild. Um, so I felt pretty good about uh, getting up there and doing that. Um, the clothing, you know, people, would you wear? I w we wore everything we had on, and then yeah. one of the, and then and then one of these snowmobile suits, you know, the kind that zips up and the oh, okay, it, it covers your whole body. Yeah, after that, and then we wore these kind of like uh, Mickey Mouse World War II boots, 
uh, if anyone knows about them, they're really simple looking, but they work. Uh, yeah, um, I've seen a lot of like Everest mountain climbers wear them. They look like uh, like moon boots almost. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then uh, the, the Russians were wearing these foam, this really lightweight, cheap feeling foam boots, but it worked. I mean, it's the foam was like this thick and. Oh man, I, I, you don't, you're good. You're good to go. Yeah. <laughs> Except, you know, you, anything exposed, you're going to get frostbite. And I did get frost nip on my nose. Um, so it's no joke up there. Um, so here we go. Right. So we, um, so you're traveling out there, you got the trucks, you took all the, uh, the snowmobiles. I have this image. Is this when you're getting out to the location? Right. That's, that's actually the pass itself. Um, it was that a, is insane. It was, it was a journey before that, uh, that, uh, it was really something, you know, um, the Ural mountains are breathtakingly beautiful. It's thousands of miles of hundreds of miles, thousands of acres of forest and beautiful forest. Uh, and it's sun. I mean, just the, the winter, just, it's like Kris Kringle, you know, it's like, it's, it's locked. It's locked in the winter up there. Yeah. It's so beautiful, but so deadly, you know, it's one of those things. Um, so and, what's, what's the reason that they like, so you make it sound like they're still doing trips up there. Is that correct? So the people in that area still go up to this pass and camp. What is the, the reason for it? Or they don't anymore. No one goes up there. Why would you go up there? There's well, no, I'm wondering why they would go up there originally. <laughs> okay. Well, they went up there originally to get the certificate. The certificate is you have to be a certain amount of uh, time in the field, uh, that a certain amount remote. And okay. then they, they just, they, they knew this mountain. It was on the map and no one's been there. Let's do it. It was a thing for them. Um, and, um, you know, they, yeah, it's, it's so much to uh, uh, unpack here. Um, I think we should just maybe keep going with the basics, right? Sure, sure. Um, the, the, they were yeah, I'll found. Pull up, uh, pull up the yeah. next, the, 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 into the hinterland is the next one I'll yeah. pull up right here. Yeah. So here's another video uh, I labeled into the hinterland. First night we stayed at a, uh, a native uh, a village. Um, of their native folks there. And it was, we woke up is cold. There's me and Josh Gates with eyelids or, or I yeah, look at that. seen that before. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> wow. Okay. It is, it must be minus 20 degrees out. I'm with Josh Gates. What's going on? Uh, hi guys. It's cold. Yeah. Where are we right now? <laughs> somewhere in Siberia. Yeah, somewhere. And uh, it's freezing. It's so cold right now. Like my smile is just stuck to my face <laughs> right now. <laughs> Oh man. Silly. Silly, oh. yeah. Everything goes. We have an expression in expedition unknown, triple E. Everything, everywhere, every time. So we bring everything. We bring it all. Hell with it, you know. How does um, the how does your equipment work? I mean, do you have to keep it warm? You said you're flying drones around. I I mean I have a Mavic and I know when it's cold out, the battery just dies fast. It dies fast, but the, that camera right there, uh FS7 is didn't even have a cover on it. That thing was a champ. It, it worked real well. All our equipment worked well in minus degrees. It's just nuts. There, that's how I rolled up there backwards. That's with, that's right, crazy. With my sound man driving, who is a horrible driver <laughs> on a snowmobile. We we yeah. Uh, he he didn't get it that when you get bogged down, you got to prop prop. You got to like gun it, you know. So we just go, you know. There was it like his first like, time driving a snowmobile? Oh, and you just had to trust them. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's deep, deep, deep snow. I mean, it's hard to uh, uh, have a, a snowmobile in deep snow. You have to know what you're doing. Sure. And you have to use momentum and know when to gun it and stuff. And it was challenging. Is like getting up these 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 paths and breaking ground and getting lost. And um, it really was a big adventure. Um, uh, there's those snowsuits I was telling you about. Yeah. So you can imagine. I was getting hot almost sometimes, you know. Um, the helmets stay on, you know, even when outside. So as I say, it's going to provide some, some cover and some warmth from the wind and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. So yes, it's the first morning, uh, waking up from the, uh, from the village. Uh, and this is the real 
it's oh, it's beautiful. Jump off point. Yeah, it's it's uh, the the trees and mountains are. It's just epic. And then here we go. This is a, one of the just a typical. We it took a whole day in this kind of stuff. A whole day. And blah, blah, blah. oh, someone fell out. Go circle back. You know, okay, where is so and so? And lost communication. We took a wrong turn. You just name it. And, and that's a whole separate show. We couldn't even talk about is is the getting just, there. Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, and um, <clears throat> but we again um, the people in charge uh, who uh, so this is we stayed um, our first night in a cabin that was that was there and uh, for people the cross country skiing stuff like that you know you see these things in Adirondacks and stuff and um, and this is uh, my other uh, cameraman uh, uh, Brian Weed on the left and uh, there's Josh Gates and uh, we're always so silly. When, and we, when it gets really, really, really hard, we laugh and we get silly and um, it's kind of weird. I think, you, I think you, it's not normal. <laughs> you, you have so, to. Yeah. You, if you don't laugh, you cry, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know you know what you signed up for. This yeah, is so our right. producer. She, uh, this is her second time up there because uh, the producers have to go and uh, do a, um, a scout first and then come back, meet the crew at the, at the train station and go right back up. So she um, went all the way out to the pass yep. to scout and then came back in to do it again. And yep, she's still because, smiling. So that's, that's pretty wild. Um, it played. I made she's the great. Five. Yeah. Hold on. I'll, re I'll, I'll rewind a little uh, bit. We'll, yeah, see, we'll she, see what she uh, says. In this cabin, it was really cold in the middle of the night. It got like really cold and she got up and, and built a fire and it was great. <laughs> she's yeah, like, she, I've been through this before. I know what to do. She's a Texan. <laughs> She's a strong-willed Texan, you know, tell them you can't do something. I know some um, Texans that can't stand when it's like 40 degrees in Milwaukee. That's right. I can't. So, yeah, she's definitely <laughs> tough. Yeah. Here, let's see what she has to say. I made the fire. <laughs> I made the fire. I kept all y'all warm. <laughs> <laughs> I chopped the wood. I made the fire. Is the lighter still alive? Female power. That's right. Oh, she's putting all the men to shame. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Good for her. Yeah, she's up. And believe it, <laughs> that when you wake up at a place like that and you, everyone had that look on their face, like, here we go. Like, it's going to, you know, once we leave that door, it's going to be four, three, four days of um, a, a life, just something that is going to take a lot of effort. Uh, and you know it's going to be hard, and you know it's going to be uh, unexpected things, and it, so it, that's that feeling on those people's faces. Besides her, she's already been there, so she 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 kind of knew what to expect, right? But if you don't, um, it was scary knowing that how much work we had to do to to make this TV show. It was a two part series, mm -hmm. um, and everything you know. Besides, just the expedition itself is the filming part and the the cameras and and coverage and people saying things that help tell the story um it's it's a lot of moving parts but we're real tight we're a tight group and we yeah, all kind of, yeah yeah it's amazing like not only do you have the physical aspect of this but you're still filming a tv show so you still have to think about all that stuff on top of not dying out in <laughs> the remote part of russia i, know. I get I, I, um, my background is climbing, mountaineering, and, um, the risk of things is all depending on how comfortable you are with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, someone who walk, walks a tight wire, wire up a thousand feet and knows I'm not going to fall because I, I'm so good at this. Um, so we, we, we're like that, or I'm like that, especially I like li living in the moment. This is my kind of show, uh, where I can use my mountaineering skills and my filmmaking skills together. Uh, and uh, it's great. You know, um, this one in particular, we knew that something could bad could happen. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you try to laugh that off and just do what you can, but you're so remote. You're so out there. You're way in Siberia. I mean, we were passing gulags, you know, that's how far. Yeah, like a oh, Russian wow. gulag. Like, wow. like still functioning Russian gulags? Oh, no, come on. Okay. Uh, hey, <laughs> hey, I, hey, I don't know. Uh, maybe, but they're not there. They're, they're called something else now, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah these, gulags, these, these gulags are like work camps. You know, you get say you say something bad about the mm, politics, but 
you disappear. You come to these gulags. Um, so, um, you know, um, the b before we actually get to the past, uh, can, let's talk about some of the theories, what people are thinking happened. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I made a list here. Um, all right. So let's start with UFOs. <laughs> um, yes. The, the, right. Why not? Right. The, yeah. Yep. Um, the, the campers documented everything. They have a lot of photographs. They found all the cameras. Okay. Um, and the last photo on one of the cameras, the last known photo were these strange lights in the sky. Okay, so yeah, the, right the glowing orbs and that was take that was taken from their camera, but seen by another group, correct? I don't know that. I, I didn't hear that one, but they did find okay. uh, they did find uh, those lights. Um, and what are they? But it's blurry, aren't they? Always <laughs> can't yeah. you ever get it just a clean picture, right? So uh, right, so that was blurry. <laughs> so they um, obviously. Um, maybe that right who knows there's also like something else outrageous bigfoot you know uh in in uh their their world's called a meg and it's um it's uh in every actually uh indigenous culture there is a bigfoot um strangely enough no matter where you go in the world mm -hmm. um and because again it was a picture that was blurry it was towards it and it was it looked bigfooty you know with the blurry like walking looking back you know it's yeah, like yeah. what <laughs> no way um so, you know, okay, now let's get into stuff that it could be, right? Um, some people say it was the indigenous people uh, that live around that area. Uh, you know, they like to blame game people. Oh, it's them, you know. Mm -hmm. But these folks are known to be the nicest people you'll ever meet. <laughs> and actually, upon research, they found out they were first, uh, they're the ones who brought um, the military folks and people up there, and they did the first searching for these folks there. They're concerned, you know. People thought that they um, maybe these hikers uh, desecrated uh, one of their burial sites, or you know, uh, disrespected them somehow. But these people are timid folks, and sure. uh, they're not like that. So, and it didn't add up. It it just didn't add up. Um, and then some people think that a prisoner from the Gulag escaped. Um, and they did the research there as well. There's some lights. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is the, the image that they took at night of what they said was the orbs. And so I, I what I was doing was I listened back to when we did the show mm -hmm. and we had a report and again, ours is only online research. You were there. So they said there was another group camping, not on this mountain, about 30 miles away that had reported they saw glowing orbs. And that was essentially what they thought was corroborated by why would you take a picture in the night in the dark unless you're trying to capture a thing or something that's right and um one of the um deceased uh campers had the, a camera around his neck as well so um why would he take it but take that um so um what we do know is this is that they they all them took a knife and ripped themselves out of the tent no one came in. They ripped them out. They came with, on their socks. Nothing was on right. They mm -hmm. left stuff behind. Um, so something of grave danger made them leave in a hurry, right? Yeah. So this is um, two of the hikers here that are found by a creek were missing their uh, tongue and missing their eyes. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll explain what that could have been afterwards. Um, also, um, some people think it was a natural event. Um, there is, um, something called infrasound that my friend Donnie Akar, um, with his dead mountain book, uh, New York times bestselling dead mountain book, um, kind of hinted at that it's a phenomenon that a reverberation through the mountains that creates this low kind of frequency, kind of like those weapons they use now to make people vomit and go to the bathroom. Oh, yeah, things. yeah. Yeah, something like that that made them come out. Um, and that, uh, or another natural phenomenon would be um, an avalanche, right? Another mm -hmm. um, would be uh, 100 mile an hour winds, right? Another one would be um, extreme cold snap. Uh, which is like instant hypothermia where you rip your clothes off and you do weird things. Hypothermia, look it yeah. up. Um, 
Yeah, we always, address that a lot on our show, paradoxical undressing, they call it, when you just you get to a state where you actually feel like you're hot. Yeah. It happens a lot on Everest, and then you take all your clothes off and just freeze to death. Yeah, but all of them. That see that that's what what we talked about. And again, mm-hmm. I really enjoyed listening to it again because there's so many theories where a part of the theory can work, but then there's something else that unravels it. Yeah. So there's um, there's there's instances where that will work, but like you said, okay, all nine of them had the exact same thing happen. Not one of them was had their right. wits about them the whole time. And now here's another thing. There's a military is a military testing. Um, there's a military base like 60 miles away. This is the beginning of the Cold War. They were testing um, a bomb called a um, it's called a uh, R-12 Davina missile. And uh, they were testing that at that time. Also, cluster bombs were being uh, tested. This is something that they would lob into the uh, remote places where they knew no one was possibly this mountain range, possibly this pass, because this mountain and this pass is kind of like it's a spot, you know, like if you look in at night or in a day, you'd see that and be like, hey, aim for the aim for that, you know. Sure. Um, and then there's another um, uh, something, uh, another theory that um, that they were testing these bombs above them. Imagine sleeping. <gasps> Boom, yeah. boom, boom, yes. boom, what the, get out. Like you don't know what's going on. Kind of like, that makes sense, right? Well, and um, if you're seeing glowing orbs in the sky from far away, are they ex- micro bursts or explosions or things like that? And, right, like, uh, right. Or it could be that it, you know, I mean, also it's so cold. Um, this, it could be a plasma ball, you know, uh, but that's more for not natural phenomenon. Um, Let's see. It also, they found uh, radiation on their clothes when they found them. And um, that was tested. And uh, so that kind of maybe makes some military thing. Um, also, some people think that um, they're in the wrong place at the wrong time. And they were seeing, they saw something they shouldn't have. And uh, they got gangster on them and, and got them out by gunpoint and, uh, and let them die. Or some rogue soldiers got lost and were like, I see a tent. Let's just, let's just get these people out so we can survive. Mm-hmm. And because the strange thing about it is these hikers um, were found. Um, real, oh, so that's pretty much all the theories, right? Um, yeah. Am I, do you know if I'm missing anything? Do you got anything on your radar that we're missing? Um, I would say that, those are the theories we heard, and then we kind of came up with our own. So let's let's go through, I would say, almost like the timeline of what they think happened based off of what it was, and then we can talk about, I'd say, maybe yeah. what we think and then what you think, and, and okay. that's really well, what we want to get the heart to because you you were there. And, that, yeah. and then I do want to hear at the end of how your expedition went up there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I absolutely. Mean, <laughs> that's the thing. You know, we – I've been there, and yeah. I, I can – talk about what it was like there and it's not theory right so yes that's something to say right i mean not too many people a lot of the expeditions we do not a lot of people have gone there how could they yeah they would i mean you you have to be a rich, part of a tv show almost right or you gotta be like some <laughs> rich billionaire who'd like even that it sounds ridiculous right sure um so um so here we go um Two bodies were found under a tree. Uh, their arms um, were kind of up like this in a weird position, and their clothes are off, like someone ripped their clothes off, right? And now mm-hmm. they found them at the, a mile away at the edge of a forest looking back at the tent. So they didn't go back to the tent. They tried to build a fire. Uh, they climbed a tree 10 foot. And they got some branches uh, and dribbled it down, and uh, they found them um, in a weird way, like their clothes were taken, right? Two yeah. more, two more bodies were frozen. Uh, uh, t- um, um, one more body was found between halfway between that area and the actual tent, crawling as if hands and knees, like ah, trying to get there. Um, also, with a heavy, um, uh, with a, a heavy mark on their body, like a bruise, like a big contusion. Um, again, uh, there were. They died of hypothermia. Um, um, let's see. There was oh, that was two bodies right there. Uh, mm-hmm. One body was um, 
on a, a, a straight line uh, in between the campfire with a fractured skull. Uh, and the same kind of width as a butt of an AK, right? Um, foul play sounds it. I mean, now it's getting weird, right? Mm -hmm. um, sure. Like so, who else was out there and why? Right. So now we got uh, two bodies under the tree, two bodies frozen like they're crawling. One was um, with a fractured skull. Okay, right there. You see that those branches that you see there? That's um, falling, right? That's because they climbed the tree, and they were, and that's why that photo is taken. And there were, there's debris and tree stuff you, they saw. You know, like they're trying to survive out there, trying yeah. to get meanwhile, away from something. Almost. Right. Meanwhile, you, or why they couldn't go back to their tent for some reason? Yeah. Why? That okay, was the big speculation when when we were because it's it's like you said in the initial part they cut out so something yeah. was happening fast yeah. enough where they they couldn't get out the normal way they cut out um, the one weird thing we got from the reports was they as they got out they speculated they they didn't run and they single filely walked uh, in whatever direction they were going in what we would suppose is what they were sleeping in because why would they be that almost have makes you think they were like marched out. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. And that's where they went to the woods, right? And then two two months later, uh, four bodies uh, were found by the frozen creek, and that's where they're missing their eyes, and they had caved in skulls. Okay, mm -hmm. like mm, okay. So there's a and there's a lot of um, stuff that can only happen with a heavy object. Um, so a brutal, brutal, really. Uh, what happened to these folks? Uh, any way that went down, something happened uh, in a in a way that was terrifying. Um, and those photos are terrifying too. I don't want to look at those because um, uh, it's like um, so. The more you learn about this, it's just like, well, you know, they didn't die from natural causes because they're so good at what they do. Mm -hmm. um let's just scratch that off right um, sure and then you know for me i'm from new york you know i've seen you know paid six every day they call it daily daily blotter you know like oh no what what happened today um the um i think personally they got um they had to leave by uh, emergency uh, someone either with a rifle um or these cluster bombs uh up top i mean just deafening boom, 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 the ground shaking all oh, the comp the the the, phew, the air kind of going and phew, like uh, oh, a whole bunch of it for a long time like what the hell um mm -hmm. uh and then they were afraid to go back or they couldn't find it that's the part it gets so weird you know it's just like what do you mean they couldn't find their tent or one was trying to get back why don't they just go back um, the ones they found um, by the tree line, the two um, built a little fire and their socks were burned like they were trying to get warm. I mean, it was fucking cold. Yeah. Yeah. Minus something. And the wind was, we we're up there at that time. It is no joke, you know. And then when the body, the bodies thought out, you know, they did some investigations. And But, you know, we're talking about a dirty crime scene here that is what turns out is was not done by the books at all mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um the timeline was off so many once you pick it apart um you don't really know even what to believe anymore um uh, so you think because they, they reported they only found nine sets of footprints but there's also you're talking about cold war ussr information is uh, it yeah is, is it just oh yep there are only nine sets of footprints and we talked about in the episode it was um one of the guys who was investigating this started going down a different path and actually going down the military path. Uh, and then he came out and I believe it was like in 94 or some recent time where he was compelled to give a narrative that basically said it was a compelling force of nature yeah. that caused the deaths mm -hmm. or something like that, which makes you think military cover up. Um, the one thing, I'll, so I like that theory. Uh, I listened to what I talked about in the show uh, when we did it on the uh, the 14th episode. The one thing that got me, if if it wasn't that, it said that uh, some of them or all of them had burns around their lips uh, and some blood coming out of their mouths. And I used to be a firefighter. And that also points to some sort of smoke inhalation. 
So I, this this could be a long shot, but what I was thinking could potentially be is they have that that uh, that same wood burning thing that was in the truck, uh, the stovepipe method in their tent. Mm. And one of the things that they do when you have one of those campsites, because I've I've I haven't camped with one of those before, but I have friends that do. Uh, at night, if you're not going to run it, you have to take the stovepipe out because otherwise you just have a hole in your tent. Yeah. And what I speculated is if and this is again would go against because they're experts at what they're doing essentially. If they had embers or fire still hot in there and didn't know it, I could imagine if I was in a tent sleeping and then you wake up to a smoke-filled tent and you're inhaling smoke, you can't see, you're panicking because if you're, uh, like I said, I was a firefighter. If you ever have your mask get yeah. taken off when you're in a fire, you can panic. So I'm like, okay, if they can't see, are they going to cut their way out? And then they cut out. How long do you think, based on, you were there, the temperature, if you're dressed like that, Oh. Is it possible they started getting hypothermic like almost immediately to where they get out of the tent to run away thinking it's on fire? And by the time maybe they come to their senses or start, some of them start going back because they realize, oh my gosh, this is way worse. Uh, or do they start losing it? And that's that's one of the things outside of foul play that I was thinking could have potentially happened. And here's the only thing. Uh, their, um, their stoves were unpacked. They didn't pack and their in their diaries they mentioned we haven't uh, unpacked our our cooking yet because they're hardcore they don't you know they want to keep moving okay on. so that kind of yeah if, we didn't have that information that yep that, there goes that whole theory <laughs> it's in their diaries and also what they found is it was unpacked it wasn't pa unpacked yet so okay. what's up with that you know i mean i hear you on that and as far as um the avalanche goes we did some testing with the expert uh up there mike um and the the great the grading of it was too shallow for it okay. to, to slide at all um and this audio phenomenon that happens uh it's not proven. And mm -hmm. come on, how many people, how many times have you heard that or heard anything of that? It's like a plasma ball. It's yeah. like, so it's happens by nature, but so rare, but it could cause, you know, there and is impact nine individuals in the exact same way. That's I, right. I feel like one of the theories that you mentioned during, when you're talking about the theories was maybe there were some Russian soldiers out there that were cold and starving and they saw these tents and they walked up cut them out just yanked them out marched yeah, they them came to, in like out. yeah marched them to the forest and you know and sadly this is what and happened <laughs> as far as far as the footprints go when i go uh snowshoeing or climbing or anything in the snow i follow everyone else's step that's mm -hmm. the right yeah. thing to do it's that's what you do. You know, yeah. you don't have to do in a new a new uh, round of holes you just take the step of the other person um so i mean they were you know they were scared they were looking back at their tent they didn't mm -hmm. get to it they um uh and then they then the 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 skull smashing the 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 the, the big bruises on the body the you know the tongue the the tongue we found out that the the tongue out and the eyes in that creek is bugs and uh, uh rodents and animals mm, okay they, they peck that flesh stuff out right away that's mm -hmm. like the first thing that goes uh so that that happens um you, so was there any type of put fall potential that could explain any of that trauma or was it was there nothing like that where they could have fell or causing maybe, a skull fracture yeah sure anyone that could happen um but, well, um, based on what, how they described it, it sounded like, uh, well, the the way it was described in the research we did was like the chest, the issue, the guy who had the ch broken chest, it was to the level of like a car crash impact. That's right. That's right. So, I mean, if you're going to mimic that by falling, it'd have to be like a sheer cliff. And it didn't seem like there was anything like that there. Right. Um, you can, why don't you play one of the, the videos um, of the pass itself? Um, there's also a picture you'll see... A, it's a picture. It's it's it's. I think it. I called it like uh, talking points or something. Um, play that one, and you'll see the okay. picture and how far the the. Um, okay, so right there. Why don't you stop right there? Okay, so th there is the edge of kind of where they're camping, and those are the trees and the tree line below. It's a mile away. Um, wow, right? I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's and look at it. It is cold there. It looks cold. 
Maybe. It looks freezing. Oh, yeah, oh, it oh, looks ridiculous. It looks like how I picture Russia, actually. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're yeah. from the fo frozen north, and it makes yeah. me cold. Yeah. So, <laughs> th this picture right here is um, on our way to the pass, uh, almost there. Um, this looks a lot like the expedition they were on when one or two of their photos, almost the same kind of look and feel. Mm -hmm. um, and you see it looks like we're in the, Ar the, the Arctic Circle or something. Yeah, like Antarctica. Like I, mean, I know. Yeah. I mean, and dragging that stuff behind us, it is a, oh my God. How it's, heavy was all the, the camera gear you had to lug I mean, out there? I mean, just, I don't know so much. I mean, the camera itself <laughs> I use is 35, 40 pounds. Yeah. That, that thing's glued to my hand and my shoulder is always. Yeah. Um, and as well as you got to be prepared for extra batteries and, you know, you have to have. Plus it, all your I, other gear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not right. That's yeah. the thing. It's about being a, a adventure filmmaker. You got to take care of yourself, but almost first you got to get this the shot. <laughs> yeah, sure. And and meanwhile, I, all these photos I took and video stuff is me, as well as knowing that this is a really important expedition, and I want to document it f for for shows like this, um, and also just for myself. I mean, I've been to you know some crazy places where they bust out like the map of you know. A Christopher Columbus map comes out and I'm all click as I'm shooting. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah. Or like um, uh, Roswell, uh, they took out the original negative of the dude, you know, when they're looking at this, at the material, the military guys, and they're kind of smiling a little bit, all of those, bit, you know, the negatives, I'm all click, click, click. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I absolutely would do the exactly the same thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, this shot here, you see the wind just rips through this place. It makes this, Kind of yeah. straight. This is, um, it's something else. Um, I've never been uh, as cold. I, I climbed Mount Washington once. It is, this is interesting. This is, you can see the wind whisking up. We're trying to get a shot on a tripod. Uh, we're having a hard time uh, doing it for sure. Um, and you'll see another picture where we're actually holding down the camera with all our weight. Uh, look, this is me shooting uh, Josh and the expert just walking. Look at them. This is like nuts. So uh, iconic rock there right here. Um, why didn't they go here? Why didn't they go yeah. to this rock cow cropping? Um, and this is our sound man just sitting there and <laughs> while the wind just Jeez. blows him. I mean, come on. This Trying to place. figure out how he's going to get sound with the wind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's, yeah he he's looks like he's just a little defeated. <laughs> yeah, he's like, you got a lava on it. Yeah, you know, you got it. Oh, <laughs> but uh, he's great. Uh, this is that shot again. This I thought was this is their viewpoint. This is where they camped. It's in the middle. They camped. Uh, there's Mr. Gates, our leader. Josh Gates is the man uh, when it, he's the real deal. Yeah. Uh, why don't you stop it right here? Um, why don't why don't they go to this rock rock outcropping here and, and do what everyone else would do would go get some shelter, get yeah. out of the wind. What are you doing out there? Like right in the middle of this kind of like a basin, like like the the kind of like a almost like a little glacier almost. It's like right so ex where the wind is woo, different angles. Why? Why would you go there? It's yeah. kind of a dumb, dumb move. Um, but they might have just been boasty about it. Like, we're so good. They're cocky, you know, just mm -hmm. yeah, just so do it right out in the open. We are smoking cigarettes, you know. Yep. Um, you know, I, I've been guilty of doing that because like uh I mean, I love, I love climbing mountains and sometimes when it's like a whiteout blizzard, it's like the most fun. It's, it's yeah. like a challenge. It's, it's neat. It, you get right. good video for sure. Right. Right. They, I'm sure they felt that way. Um, sure. This is, um, another part of me thinks that, look, we're talking 1959, the beginning of like hippie type of stuff. I think part, part of me says, why do people act this way? I don't know. Let's think drugs. Okay. Heroin, mm -hmm. uh, heroin, uh, mushrooms bad trip maybe yeah okay i no one brought this up or nothing i'm just thinking why do people act this way mm -hmm. because they have a, on a drug psychosis they're three days up yeah like you know these people i live in venice california i see zombies walk across the street naked yeah it could be like that sure yeah. um and, and you uh, can imagine no substance abuse in a place like this would be common i mean if you're well, living in if, if you're living in conditions like russia uh, and you have access to it. It's why do they drink? Why would they do anything? It's it's uh, to disassociate a little bit, maybe. Kinda. These are these kids are squeaky clean. You know, they're they're the top shelf uh, 
on oh, the way to, on so the they're way. like scout scouts yeah they're they're oh, eagles, okay they're eagle scouts on their way to being the the the, the head of zaminga in the fourth dimension like the biggest award and to them it's a it's a big badge it's a big honor and um a lot of bragging rights uh it's something that is a life thing to do for these folks it's more important than americans could even think about because um it's pride uh it's, it's their family um mm. and also uh uh, it's like the old days that like, go oh, adventure, you know, we're going to go and then come back and write tales of it, you know, a romantic type of thing. Uh, but that's why it hit so home uh, for because it's uh, with everyone in Russia. This is again, this is the biggest mystery in Russia. Uh, this is their you know, JFK assassination. This is like, uh, I think after this, the their uh, innocence was, you know, after the. World War II, coming back from that right before the Cold War. This is something that really hit hit them hard. They want to know what was going on, but it was right during the uh, beginning of the Cold War. The government had was covering everything up. They don't sure. know. They didn't know what it was covered up. I mean, wouldn't mm -hmm. you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, especially, I could imagine. Especially since they don't know what happened. <clears throat> Cover it up. Um, so you keep, keep playing the video. Um um, look, see that guy? He, um, we have a assistant cameraman here leaning back as far as he can, holding on to this camera uh, on a tripod. <laughs> wow. <laughs> look at him. Just like, just from the wind, like would just knock yeah. it over if he didn't? Yeah, it was it was Jeez. an emergency. Like, get that camera. And look, it, on, on uh, we have to see on the back of the cameraman on the, the left. His name's Weed, Brian Weed. We got to do that. Got to know who's who. Just uh, it's like a military operation. You know, Weed over here, you know. So, um, Jeez, yes, it's, it's wild. And, you know, I made a pact with my sound guy, Mike, to like, yo, we stick together, right? You know, I get lost. <laughs> <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> He's <Yep>. my man. <laughs> you know, my, he doesn't like to be on camera. He hates when I shoot him. Uh, he uh, And he would hate me talking about him right now. Hey, Mike. Uh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, he's not on Facebook or nothing, you know. Uh, but um, he's one of my best friends. And you really make bonds after this. Everyone on the crew after this were blood brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Sure. I, I can mean, imagine. We, we, you know, and it was like, hey, we see him in the office. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but I have that every month. I have a new group of producers going, hey, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, so here he is again. Um, How um, often do you work with the, this specific crew or is it really just all this? All the time. Okay. It, it, That's awesome. Our, yeah. We, I, uh, we do rotations uh, lately because um, of either personal issues or mm -hmm. um, you've burnt out or, but it's usually Brian Weed and myself, uh, uh, Mike Curtis is sound and then that, and then Josh, and then everyone else is uh, rotating. These producers mm -hmm. who come in, they're not expedition leaders. You know, they're not, uh, they don't know anything about the, like, you might be like, when are we eating or when's water coming? And they're like, oh, <laughs> oh right. you're, you're on your resume says you, you ski uh, or you, you mountain climb. Yeah. But this is different, right? So we've learned, uh, I've learned to uh, bring, my, I, I, I bring my own kit. I have my own peanut butter and jelly always, uh, PB and J. Um, and I have some nuts and I always bring my own water. Uh, I don't rely on these people for my mm -hmm. safety. To a certain yeah. extent, I do. Um, they're probably but, um, relying on you <laughs> or they'll, they'll find yeah. out real soon that they're gonna, <laughs> they think I'm nuts, man. I'm, I'm in, I'm, I'm walking backwards in the cave. I'm repelling first down there before Josh. And, um, again, I have this mountaineering background of climbing and repelling down. Something is so easy for me. It doesn't even matter. I do it with one hand while filming, you know, it's, it's not fun even, uh, because you can get hurt doing repelling. Most accidents happen going down. Um, so, but it's a mindset, uh, and I'm a storyteller and this, this story is an amazing one that just kept unfolding. And I really, one of the few episodes I was really invested emotionally in, uh, cause you know, we went to the grave site and we, we, we got to know who they are. Uh, and after that, I was like, what happened to them? And we would have long conversations in, in the tents or in these, uh, cabins that, that, about what would happen, what would it be? Same thing we're doing. The truth be told, we actually, if you keep playing, I want to, we camped on the pass. We're the first team that's ever done that. Um, we, yeah. Take a listen to this. So here we are.
That is so decimal. Holy cow. Yeah. And anyone who can see, you can hear it. And here, see that tent? That's a military tent. That's what we stayed in. Uh, everyone stood in, stayed in there, the whole, whole bunch of us. And uh, 15, 20 people, you know, uh, back up. And uh, when you had to go to the bathroom, you had to really, you had to wait and be like, do I really have to go? And then it's like, <laughs> I have to go. You put on everything and you're outside. You pulled out your pants. You're like, okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. And then, and then you're like, it's God forbid you have to do number two. And you just, I don't oh know. my gosh. Yeah. You have to spend more time. I you could just, imagine urinating and having it just freeze as it's going out. We, um, <laughs> during, during the show, we actually went out during the night. Uh, it was about 1 a.m. to one of our experiments, uh, just outside the tent a little bit. What it would be like at night? It was, uh, is and that's when they left the tent and stuff and it was minus 30 the winds were blowing it was dark as all hell it was scary and it was dangerous dangerous i mean one of those few times i'm like okay let's wrap it up you know <laughs> get back, sure. back in uh, and to safety and if you if you play a little bit more uh i did i'll turn it down a little bit yes uh so there is there was i woke up to wind the whole tent was like, oh wow it was like bending and all it's like oh my god this is this is what happened possibly to the folks you know yeah, yeah. maybe um maybe and this is totally realistic you see how we're on top of uh all these different valleys are around us it's a really unique site um, the, on one end, you see the Ural mountains is another end of these are the mountains. It's like a perfect kind of like wind kind of magical wind tunnel. <laughs> and, yeah. um, and it's, when I say it's cold there, these, it comes off, uh, the ocean up, uh, in the, you know, Siberia way up past that. I and mean, we're talking coming through, um, and it could turn minus 60 from minus 20 to minus 60 in a second and if that happened to them and it just got wildly cold really quick hypothermia stuff and acting cray cray is is a possibility but not one of them did the right thing i don't you know there we go again right yeah um, so we stayed there um um yeah, this is, we stayed there a whole night. And in one of the clips, you'll see it's like, I think it says pass. Uh, pass yeah, I saw just, one that said rough night on the pass. Yeah, that one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, yeah. All right. So take a look. Holy at cow. It. Whoa. Yeah. See, you know this is what I would imagine Antarctica is like. <laughs> when they say when, when hell fle freezes over, this is what it is. Right. Yeah. And this is us oh, getting we're lost right here. Uh, and this is us talking like, hey, where where is this thing? It's getting nighttime out. Uh, and some of us had to actually get out and walk over the stuff and get off the jet ski, uh, off the snowmobiles um, and just forge ahead. Um, and it was scary. And then here it is. We found it. Pass. Here's our home for the night. night right right now i'm on the dotlov pass in siberia russia this is one of the biggest mysteries in russia on this pass right over here where we're going seven hikers died nine mysteriously <laughs> and right now it's 30 below and uh we're gonna reconstruct what happened and see if we can figure it out Right. And here we are. This is it. You know, it was, we got to this point and it was really exciting. It was like the next day we're going to do this. We're going to find out, we're going to retrace. And, and a lot of the story got unfolded that next day by these experts, the stuff that I didn't even know. We yeah. actually walked through the forest where it happened, how long did it take to walk there? And, mm -hmm. and you really kind of put boots on the ground. It gets more and more mysterious. This is the inside of the tent, right? And all boots, and, you know, stinky stuff. Yeah. Then, yeah. Yeah. Oh, who cares? Right. And then, yeah, as uh, long as you're warm. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, keep going. I think you'll see the, the, uh, the tent 
And then Teddy always brought teddy bears. And that Russian there next to me, he don't smile. No smiles. Oh, oh crap. I just, uh, yeah. I got to go back there. Hold oh, on. yeah. There it is. <laughs> so, yeah. No and I'm smiling. smiling. They think something's wrong with me. Like, I'm a, you know, <laughs> yeah. They think You're something's just happy wrong. you don't live there. That's why. <laughs> Even though I'm, I'm, Paul, I'm from Russia, in my family, but we got booted out the 1917 Polish show. Right? A Bolshevik revolution, but this is, um, yeah, so those are like, oh, here we, here go. we go. This is what I wake up to. Wow, okay, yeah, I mean, if that collapses, you're stuck. No, I was expecting it just to fly off, right? Yo, and, then, geez. and then every man for himself, right? Like, um, where's my stuff? I was like, almost had it on, you know, and then you march single file towards the woods. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if that thing ripped off, it was really getting gnarly like like testing it that's me in the morning just shell shocked yeah and that's, again one of those times where like this is gonna be a big day you know we're not only gonna go explore we're gonna pack up and get out uh all in one push um the longer you're up there the more you know danger it dangerous it is um I, you know it yeah a, a sidebar story there was a writer uh uh, who must have lied on his resume. Look at me. I look like Joe Rogan there, actually. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, uh, put you in a, you, in a, you know, so a little something, uh, keep it going. And then here we go. This is our next morning. And this is us preparing to uh, go and do a little investigation here. Um, and uh, it was like being on a, a an invest uh, like an expedition. There was expedition leaders. There was the people you listen to, no matter what. Uh, you know, it was um, the experts that say it's time to go. It's time to go. Yeah, um, it's like the Sherpas I, on Everest. You do what they do and don't ask yeah, questions. That's right. <laughs> um, but you know, um, I had enough wherewithal. And if they want to take a lot of photos, um, I and I love I love this stuff. Come on, I'm. I, <laughs> there's there's um anyhow there was a writer there that made it to the top right here and mm -hmm. quit he quit he said <laughs> i don't want to do this anymore he's I already said, there <laughs> i said what because he was scared yeah oh uh, yeah I, no he was really scared he said yeah, i don't yeah. want to do this anymore and i said what do you want us to do he said i want to someone to take me home i said no one's going to take you we said no one's going to take you back it'll danger them their lives we're all going together in a group if you don't want to be on this show you stay right here and we went without him. And mm. uh, I won't say his first name, but we called him, his name was L, some of it starts with an L, and then we called him Loser. <laughs> oh. <laughs> let's, just, let's imagine his name was Lauren, Lauren the Loser, you know? Yeah. And it, that was his name because I was like, dude, you made it to the top. But he was, I knew from the beginning um, that he was gonna be a problem. And I called it to Josh. He had soft hands, no yeah. calluses or nothing. And uh, he was from uh, Scarsdale, New York, which is like the Beverly Hills. Uh, yeah. So my sister lives. And uh, and there's no hard folks coming out of there. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, it's like. Talk about selfish. Like, oh, I, I need someone to take me down. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> yeah, at that point, he probably was just so terrified. It's just like, it was like panic. Scared. He was good and he tried to he tried to sue for mental anguish. I'll never be able to get on a dumb water. Like, dude, Snow you signed again. up for this. Yeah, yeah. No, he, he lost that one. <laughs> and then uh, a couple of months later, funny thing is he, uh, uh, executive producer called Josh up and said, Hey, Josh, there's a guy here who says he worked on your show. You know, they vet you out. They call, mm -hmm. you know, they call those people. It says he's sitting right in front of me. His name is, and, and Josh is like, uh, Take me off speaker. <laughs> and this, <laughs> and this told him, Don't, this guy. And then he, I can imagine on the other side. But why would you lie on this one? This is like, there Life was or another, death. <laughs> there was an uh, an, an, uh, an assistant cameraman there his first time on the show ever, just like off the, the plucked out of Hollywood somewhere, and he was loving it. I mean, yeah, he yeah. had a big smile on his face. He's just almost like was so he just didn't know. Yeah, I think he's just like this is it's the adventure, man. Get. It's adventure. Some people don't even know they'll love it until they get thrown into it, and they're like, holy cow, this is a whole different way to live. Yeah, it's um um so. After boots on the ground, after all that, I kind of I'm leaning more towards his military um, exercise um, that was being tested up on the pass. I think that you know, these kind of um, this missile that was being tested and was found a piece of it was found near the, a mile away. 
uh, they were testing in this area. And in the middle of February, on that pass, most likely, there's no way someone's on that pass. That's what they're thinking. Sure. They're thinking, they're yeah. thinking no way. Um, we're going to lob it up there because it's mid-February or beginning of February. No one will be there. That's for sure. And someone was. And I think that they were raining these, like, cluff, uh, you know, these uh, these uh, phosphorescent, like, you know, the, you know, uh, the apocalypse now, you know, sure, like, yeah, ah, you know, um, doors music, riders, all, like, ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they just out. you can't have any of the bad press, so it's oh, we'll go investigate, and oh, they, look at they, they must have died of uh, natural causes. Well, I, I, it's like it's like the OJ trial almost. It's like, look, the it, you muddle up the evidence enough, you, you're done. Like the guy who moved the glove, the cop who moved the glove. He did it on purpose. He wanted to get OJ, but he did it. And now the whole investigation is messed up. Same thing with this. It's like they um, – here's the news I was going to tell you earlier, guys, and viewers. This is really cool. Um, we got back from this investigation, and there was, a, there was something they brought out of the back. It was a, it was a, a piece of paper, a government uh, piece of paper that was released if, uh, that much years later, finally released um, – um, a lot of these files were missing, inconclusive, um, but this file came out and it was um, legit um, that the military was there four or five days. Uh, it, no, it took a month to get up there. They were there weeks before, mm -hmm. trudging really? around, marking everything up. Who knows what they're doing up there? Um, so right there, it's like, you know. Yeah, it Either, contradicts what they said at the time, what the initial reports were yeah, saying. Yeah, and you know, well, every time you think it's an uh, um, some sort of conspiracy, you're like, oh, I don't think these government operations are that smart to make it <laughs> yeah. so. Sure. And then this, and then they did that because of that. It's like, no. And I speak to people in the military. They're like, there's no way that would be a secret. That would get out. It would, it, we're not that good. Like, it's not like a, you know, there. These are. Uh, there's too many people involved. There's too many people, and and um, but it is the Cold War, you know. Uh, well, that's and, where that's where it could be like an Occam's razor. The simplest explanation is probably the most likely, and it's if they were doing military exercises, you know, it was like you said, it was documented they were doing stuff, and if it was just a couple soldiers that stumbled across it, took care of it, and said, "Uh, yep, no, we weren't there." And when the investigation comes out, and that was the big thing that really. That's tipped right. me off was as soon as the investigator started looking in that direction, they shut it down. Yep. They just yep. said, nope, and, we're not doing that. And even uh, the funerals that were going on, the, the kids would put it up around campus when the funerals, they'd take it down right away. It wasn't mm -hmm. publicized. It's not on any news station, nowhere until the Cold War was over. I mean, um, but, you know, this is um, the way you are at war, you know, a Cold War, you know, you, your secrets are everything. This, yeah. this, um, bomb material was new um it could be that i i kind of thinking like it was that. i kind of thinking someone was like with machine guns they were gonna die they're like get out and you go out and they were just waiting for them to either leave i mean the weird thing was they're at the edge of the forest yeah no clothes <clears throat> on watching you could tell what direction with the feet where they were looking mm -hmm. um and they couldn't go there why why you know, they, another, yeah, I mean, yeah. another theory, too, is that, like you said, there was a military installation nearby. Maybe these soldiers, they got tipped off that there were people up there. Maybe they thought they were, like, spies, like, That's spying right. on this new technology. So, like, we got to get these people out of here. Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, it, so, I tell you what, though, something <clears throat> of grave importance got them out in a real hurry with yeah. the fact where they couldn't even unzipper. So that's immediate danger that's mm -hmm. that's yeah. that's right now 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 danger um yeah. and split seconds and uh, you it's so, a panic and what makes you do that right what makes you do that is um woken up from your sleep with someone clanging bling bling imagine that you just wake yeah. up you're like what's it uh, but um these cluster bombs i think you know maybe poof, you know the air gets sucked out of you you know and it's yeah. a lot of them maybe and and that's what I'm thinking. Um, 
I'll tell you time. what, you, you've sold me. You've sold me too. <laughs> I think it definitely is military related too. When that well, you know, and yeah. It's like, you yeah if you're sleeping of- in a tent and all of a sudden there's explosions, you're getting out of the tent and you're getting out whatever way you can as fast as you well, can. Well, depending how close the explosions are that they could have impacted the tent, the structure, of the tent could have like flattened them or, you know, well, they didn't know that, what was going then- on. Then it's saying, you know, the 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 skull uh, skulls being bashed in by uh, you wouldn't say the same kind of width as a butt of a of a yeah. weapon. Um, and then um, so those that's more like avalanche stuff. Now, if you mm. get caught in an avalanche, you're gonna get that all that uh, debris is gonna under a lot of weight. Yeah, sure. especially since the weight of all that, and then you have to wait till spring, and it gets real heavy. Shit happens to your body when it starts to decompose. Things get crushed in. Uh, it's not as simple as that, you know? Sure. Yeah. yeah I mean, but- I think there's so many different routes, theory-wise, you could go with this. Like Joe said earlier on, that, like, you can go down one theory, it sounds really good, but then there's pieces that don't make sense with that theory. <laughs> like, Well, you know, the, the fact that we've, at the very end, when we got back, they showed us this um, paperwork, and it's in the episode... Uh, if you all need, want to watch it, it's season seven, Expedition Unknown. Um, it's a two-part series. Uh, it's called Dead Mountain. Um, on the Discovery Channel. On the Discovery Channel, Discovery Plus. It's also on Amazon uh, Prime. And, you know, you just Google it and it'll show up. And you have We'll to put pay. links to it in the show notes because yeah, I'm um, going to go back and watch it. <laughs> yeah. For, I think for $1.99 for the SD version, you, you can yeah. own it or rent it. it um I tried to find it on YouTube. Obviously, they don't. They'll give no. you a promo, but <laughs> um, yeah. but um, it took us. Speaking of, you know, an operation, it took us. I'd say a million dollars to do the whole thing. Wow. Our, our our show is almost a half a million dollars an hour uh, episode uh, times two parts. I mean, it took a lot. Investment. So, yeah. yeah. Plus, I risking mean, the lives of the entire crew. I mean, I mean, uh, yeah. well, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Always well, get the shot. No, they it's it's weird. This business like of adventure filmmaking, like uh, mm-hmm. I did make I did Naked and Afraid um, and and Expedition Unknown. These two shows are the real deal. Naked and Afraid is as real as it gets. I love that show. And I got on it. I was watch, I was filming it. Going, Ooh, get, I was just like sitting on a stump going, oh, this is amazing. You know, yeah. <laughs> can, you, it, can you fill us in just a little like behind the scenes, how that show, because that it's such yeah. a, I remember when it first came out, I was like, wait, what? Right. <laughs> They're dropping people into the wilderness naked. <laughs> right. Well, that first episode, and they're afraid. Yeah. That first episode, the producer got bit by a um, uh, what snake it was. It was. Like he's going to the he got flew out and about to get to the hospital. Yeah. Um, and then the then episode started, and I was like, "What? Um, <laughs> naked? Uh, yeah. And, uh, right. It's it's the realest show. I tell you, we do not do with no." We don't give them candy bars or mm-hmm. lunch or it is, it, it's real. It's real. I have a funny story. That's about good to naked. know. I have a funny story about Naked and Afraid. So I was there. I'm a fan. And, and part of it, the, they kept saying, when they first take off their clothes, you got to have eyes on the people, uh, their, their eyes, so you can see where they look. You know, it's like a fun thing. <laughs> <laughs> and and, uh, and I was on, uh, I was following the guy as he gets off the boat. You know, it's like a whole formatted thing. And then they, oh, don't miss it in my recording. Okay. You know, so, and then this dude drops his jaws and like, it's like the biggest member comes out. It's like a donkey is, oh, and even <laughs> I, everyone, like the, the, everyone, guys, girls, they, they, they gasped at it. And I was like, I, up, I was like, damn, bro. <laughs> I was like, yo, and then I was like, wow. And then she was really pretty. But you know, after it's like people who work on a porno set, like three days in, you're like, whatevs. His yeah. junk's in the dirt. It stinks. You know, you're like, yeah. whatever, you know, like, you know, one time I was, he was making a fire. I thought it was like a, his arm or something. It was this junk. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. It was funny. I, was like, I think the, wrist? no, <laughs> I think the, um, I think of watching that show, the, 
the best person that handled it, I don't remember names or anything, but there was one lady who they just approached each other. She goes, you know what? Let's just get it over with. Check it out. Like, let's go. Like, just brought it right up front. I'm like, that's actually a genius way to do it because everyone's thinking the same thing. She's like, let's just look at each other's stuff. Yeah. And they both did. And they're like, all right, now that's over. I'm like, well, that was yeah. a good way to handle that situation. It, it kind of reminds me of the other show. Um, I'm, I don't know if you're aware of it on History Channel called Alone. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. It's kind of similar. I, I, that's another show I, I yeah, love. I love those. Uh, you know, um, those, those, it, how long can you go in the wilderness where you tap out? I mean, it's a cool concept. Like, right. yeah. well, you know, 21 days is naked and afraid. And about yeah. the, the yeah, I've learned a lot actually about survival. Um, they usually spend their energy in the first day or two thinking they're they're going to do something. And then they, they lose, you know, yeah. you have to just totally. First of all, you got to find water. Yeah. And this, just post up and stop just be like just a get tool. water yeah and just like i'm gonna slowly do this and that but um it was real you know this uh it was uh this um army ranger uh and this uh survival girl and i thought this army ranger boy he he said you know i'm not gonna tap out he goes because my boys are watching and i can't have them laugh at me and i was like hmm. you know these military guys like, they got a big ego they they can't be having their buddies yeah you know, like, oh yeah the girl beat you you know it's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah he actually it was the first episode that naked afraid um joined xl so like after they were done with their 21 days they went down this river and it was all coordinated and then it was the group xl you know how there's like a multiple people two mm -hmm. teams of four maybe and then they were asked would you want to join and the guy joined and he was complaining the whole time how he hates it and then he joined <laughs> i was like damn we did it i was yeah. like hi I, i'd yeah, say so this, i'd stay at this eco lodge uh just my, my weight always stayed the same he's like what did you have? And I'm, no, I mean, you don't know. I was like, all right, the stew. And I had the, and he's, the, cause he was there a couple of days before he knew the menu. He said, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, but I'm just really into talking about food, you know. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. But, uh, you know, I'm, something else I want to talk about just real quick is, you know, yeah. um, the Dotlove Pass was, um, you know, a tragedy and these people lost their lives. Um, and it was really kind of, I felt like I was, part of trying to solve this thing and it wasn't just an armchair sleuth we're out there doing it really putting skin in the game and it's totally different when you're when you're physically there you're touching documents you're talking to the experts you really feel like and i'm a big fan of the show but i'm a, I'm a big fan of storytelling uh, mm -hmm. and mysteries and um this is really special episode uh, everyone could tell you this is one of the on on the team this is one of the most scariest, dangerous things we've done. And I can tell you two or three more dangerous things. I actually have a reel called Danger Moments that you might want to look at is uh, all my top five or six. Yeah, most for sure. Dangerous moments. Yeah, 100%. Um, I don't know if Joe has down. it. I, do you, did you put it in the, the files yeah, you sent on me? My, it's on my Vimeo link. So maybe I can okay. send you. But, uh, I'll um, look it up in the background while you're talking because uh, I, I might you know be able to pull what? it up. Maybe, and you can link it up to the folks watching it's um yeah. oh absolutely and you know before this show you know i met josh on destination truth um that's when the actual crew was part of the show on camera we we're looking for uh things that go bump in the night back then you know like chupacabra yeah. um also spirits um uh, unexplained stuff um not so much what this show is it's more uh night investigations looking for ghosts and i love that stuff too man i never did that kind of stuff before i work with yeah. josh and the first night i ever did it i got i got hassled by a spirit and i got like pretty much molested uh, and and i was like <laughs> no, you What's can't up? give away you can't give away too much because this is gonna be a whole nother episode <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> tease it's us right now tease us because okay. then we'll do a whole nother one well this is a good one it, people know me most for my um for this episode of destination truth where i got blown away by a ghost in uh halibutu forest in romania it's a perfect circle in the forest the ufo sightings the nazis had a thing there to experimenting you know it's like all set up to be um and i was doing something uh called a haunting which is where each crew member goes out to the field and we and other people watch them on ir cameras and say, hey you okay evan and i was cross-legged for 20 minutes and then I don't know what happened. But the last thing I remember is just being dragged backwards and they didn't find me. Uh, they found me 20 minutes later. They found me in the woods. 
uh, disorientated and I have, and I was itchy and I had these like deep scars on my arm, which I still have. Um, and that was like, Oh, welcome to destination truth. And I was like, <laughs> that was my first week. And I was from, you know, Manhattan. I'm from the yeah. main streets to the Upper East Side. I don't know anything about that. Yeah. And then I was like, what's this going on? I was kind of scared. And then we did alien mummies in the Atacanda Desert. And then we we went to Egypt. We did King Tut's tomb. We did a seance there. I mean, it was I was all in after that. I was like, this is so fun. Um, and so now I'm actually delving more into this whole side. You're gonna yeah. see me more on podcasts <clears throat> telling my story. Um, I have so many good stories to tell um and of adventure and um discovery and i do all the diving on the show too and man woof, i've done some crazy dives uh, this is this isn't nice diving this mm -hmm. is bad yeah. diving this is a bottom of wells and and murky rivers and you know things you know we dove um it's we not dope. the Caribbean looking at the uh, coral the, reefs. No, yeah. no, no. It's caves and, and uh, you know, cave diving is the scariest thing you'll ever do. It's one wrong turn. You, you're on this little rope and you're holding on. If you let it go, it just disappears. You're like, all of a sudden, whatever. Um, and it could be flooded. Uh, so many good things. But Destination Truth is, is, uh, is what I'm known for in the paranormal world. Yeah, tradition unknown. I'm known as the premier uh, adventure filmmaker, but I'm much more. I'm much more. How? It, how? It just it, not to keep you too much longer, but how did you get into into this? You said you're from the Upper East Side, New York. How did this yeah. all start for you? <laughs> I'm from the mean streets of the Upper East Side. Yeah. I mean, anyone who knows it's a laugh. It's, it's a joke. Yeah. Um, my my father uh, is a commercial director. He's retired now. And I grew up on a set uh, when I was a yeah. kid in New York City. Um, and back then, um, you know, to be in TV or movies or anything to do with film, you gotta you gotta get jumped in. You gotta work for free. At people, you gotta work at an equipment house. You gotta do your doing your own thing and buying cans of film and getting a camera. I it, it's hard to do. Uh, not like now, which is great. Um, uh, but. Um, and then at the same time, I was real country boy at heart. I would go, I started rock climbing and I took um, I, I took this thing for teens called Adventure West. It got me, I would climb the Grand Tetons at the Exum route and I got zapped. Uh, the next year I did something called Knowles, National Outdoor Leadership School. And yep. this, is, this is really what solidified my uh, mountaineering skills. Um, and then after that, I did an advanced course in the Chugach Range in Alaska, and which is like, learning to do biggest sense uh and that's when i found out i don't want to do that because <laughs> it's painful and yeah. every step it's like owie 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 <laughs> like my oh, hip yeah. my sore foot like i can't breathe and it's like torture and uh and then i started free climbing um and um so when i moved to los angeles um at 25 i became a music video director and i got lucky doing some buzzbin music videos for mtv and then I started doing uh, skate films. Um, really, my roots are in skate films and uh, illegal drag race videos uh, mm -hmm. direct to stores. I would sell um, our tapes right to uh, motorcycle shops or skate shops. And we're independent filmmakers making this called T-Bone Films or two young guys. And then we got bought out by uh, .com before the bubble in 2004. Um, and we were just off to the races. And then that, you know, imploded and then I'm back out. Um, I, I got lucky enough to be hire number five on Al Gore's current TV, which is a, um, it's not around anymore, but it's a, it was a documentary, short form documentary channel. Mm -hmm. And I won about 130 a, a doc awards. I learned how to tell stories in short form. Uh, and this is before YouTube. Um, so then when I spilled out of that, I started to work for Brad Coleman, who owns Ping Pong. And we did MTV is in 2000. Uh, we did, I just was in the golden age of MTV shows. Um, uh, you know, we did a show called um, <laughs> uh, One Bad Trip. And I think I'm going, <laughs> I think I'm going to go to hell for this one where the, the kids went on vacation and we were like, have some more drinks and go, you know, go big and make out with your friend. And meanwhile, <laughs> we had the parents there 
disguised, <laughs> disguised as like <laughs> the, 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 the driver or like <laughs> serving the drinks. Like maybe you should. Oh. Have and we made it so bad that the parents had to stay. That's it. Forget it. Stop the show. <laughs> And so we were kept pushing it. We're like, God, please just do stop it, would you? Stop the show. And it was it was horrible. And then the next <laughs> the next year, because everyone knew about the show, we the kids the kids were in on it. And uh, last time, remember the first time the parents were in on it. The yeah. second time, it's like three, two, one. The parents are coming down the hallway. Three, two, and it's like, hey, party! And then it's like. <laughs> You know, it's like, oh, gosh. Oh, God. Was- I loved all those shows. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was really cool. And then, um, and then, um, and then we did, um, Senseless Acts video. And that was a really a stunt show on MTV that if you Google it, it's like, way. I, every episode, we're like, is he going to die? It's like, we reconstructed, uh, Jeez. stunts that were in music videos, like that Eminem stand video and the car goes into the water upside down. Or we yeah. Really- did that put a guy in, in the long beach harbor and went down and, and you know and so and, and my long relationship with my client who owns the production company who does destination truth and expedition unknown um brad coleman and casey is uh you know i just want to tell everyone out there if you're a filmmaker you know your clients every job you do you got to be great um otherwise i won't get hired back if i just goof up one twice maybe you'll give me one chance but you know and uh, sure. most of all you got to be uh fun to be with yeah, sure you gotta, i can imagine you gotta be fun because no one likes a downer you know because it's infectious on the road you know someone it just spreads you know a descent to the rabble rouser you know yeah in the military it's a bunch of names like that because it's you know you could really infect the crew and and everyone uh so well, and it's kind of like the guy who uh, didn't get to the top, the loser, the loser. The loser. You, nobody wants to hang out with that guy. And, and that's kind of uh, we have an odd connection. And this is how small the world is. So when you're talking about doing the illegal street bike videos, that's how we know each other. Essentially, um, it was and it's about being that fun person. So uh, I'll tell the story real quick because um, our fans know that I, I went and did Kilimanjaro and I didn't tell the background of that. The people I went with. Uh, I knew for a good hour before we did the whole trip. So uh, I, I was at a dinner with a guy uh, and we talked for about an hour. I'm like, oh, you seem cool. And we started talking about hiking and mountain climbing. And he's like, oh, I'd, I'd be into that. And I said, oh, I'm doing Kilimanjaro next summer. He's like, oh, let me know. I'll go with you. Me thinking, okay, everyone says they would love to. But uh, like you were saying, when you get up in the mountains and it's the night and it's freezing and you're in a blizzard, it's not fun. So you got to you gotta enjoy that to do it. So uh, I knew this guy for about an hour. Uh, planning the trip. And I said, all right, I'm going to call him because I promised him I would. I said, if you're going to come with, buy a plane ticket and send me a text that you bought the ticket. He sends me a picture of the ticket text. I was like, all right, I guess we're doing this. <laughs> and then he brought his buddy. And that is one of the guys who was in those stunt videos uh, oh, yeah. that you shot. And we didn't put this all together till we were just on a camping trip in the Tetons uh, this past yeah. summer. And uh, your buddy, Aaron, and him were in those videos. And he said, oh, I, uh, one of my friends, he, he like does all these cool shows. He does all this stuff. And he's like, you got that podcast. I'm going to connect you guys. And here's the deal. All he talked about was how great of a guy you are. And like you said, if you got to be a good dude and you, you network and figure this stuff out. Uh, and he knew, you know, uh, well, I assume he thinks I'm a pretty cool dude. Otherwise he wouldn't (laughs) have made you, uh, introduce you to me, but like, that's, those are the types of connections and bonds you build that allow you to end up doing really cool stuff. Yeah. And if you're not a cool dude, no one's going to be vouching for you. No one's going to be like, hey, this guy's a jerk. Uh, <laughs> you should have him on your show. Or he's a loser. Let's 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 see if you can give him some more airtime. It's like, no, unless, no one's going to do it's, that. Unless it's a transformational show. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> or like, it's a setup. <laughs> yeah. Like, here's an asshole. We're going to make him cool. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like, a, like a, you have to re, uh, re kind of change, you know, that uh, it's impossible. But, absolutely you know but you know the cool thing about you know filmmaking nowadays like i i always made my own destiny like i said i've made my own escape films uh short form uh, all that stuff nowadays i'm really stoked on how everyone's a filmmaker now everyone's a content provider and before i thought it was like i i, I was like I, no one does what i do and oh you're a dp or, or you're a director like tell me like oh what are you working on now it's it's like i love it man i i my whole feed is learning about premier trick tips 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, and all this AI editing stuff. I'm like, oh, yeah. did you know? I said, no, I, I don't know. You can group up the audio that way. And I'm just like, right on it. So like for me, it's, um, it's amazing learning. Um, I'm, I'm now ins re-inspired by these young folks out there that are, uh, have their own U um, YouTube shows or Instagram followings. And the, 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 this whole thing when I was young was gatekeeping the information. Keep it. You know, don't tell that guy he'll take your job. It's not like that anymore. Yeah, and it, it should never have been. But, you know, hey, it wasn't that many jobs to go around. Now, um, you know, uh, content providing um, is is and they're proud of it. And I'm doing all this. Did you know that uh, low F stopped me in shallow depth of field? I was like, yeah, that's so cool. You know, they're learning <laughs> that stuff. No, that's fantastic. It, I love people that grind and you can tell that they love what they're doing. Yeah. They put out awesome content and it's just, it's, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. But you know, um, a lot of people are pivoting and changing my fiance. She uh, is into uh, online marketing now and, and any job you do, you, you need this. Like if you go baking shoes or yeah. uh, uh, dog biscuits, like if you know how to market it online, um, well, you're going to get this sales funnel that goes in and you're going to sell stuff. Right. Absolutely. And, it, and you don't have to do the, what the job that you have that you hate or still do it, you know? So it's cool. You know? Um, yeah. I'm hoping someday that they're going to call me and want me to do a, a show. Uh, uh, so, but uh, the secret is I can't remember lines. Uh, God bless. Like, <laughs> I could be myself. But once I, it's like, okay, the intro is you're walking and talking, you're kind of dishing it up. I'd be like, take a hundred. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'd be like a teleprompter. You, know? you could like, be like a, like an extra in one of those like adventure movies where you get like taken out by something there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, know like, you know what? You know what though? What's, what's, what's really cool now is people love, I mean, even, you know, Mike's interest, like tell me what it's like behind the scenes. I think like for you, it, that, I love that is that the show. Like it could be like the show of like life, life of a uh, director for the cameraman behind, like have a, you know, how meta is that? Have a guy filming the guy who films the stuff yeah, like that, that. That legitimately is a show like, well, like these stories. And that's why when I met you, I instantly was like, oh man, we have so much content here. And it's yeah. not because it's fake. It's because it's real. Your stories on ghost hunting, uh, finding Bigfoot, all that, like, that is stuff people love to hear. You saw, I mean, we posted a teaser on Facebook and we almost instantly, there's one lady, she's been posting a reading. She's like, he directs all my favorite shows. I can't wait to hear about it. Oh, that's uh, nice. I know. So, I, got a, I got a fan club. I got a yeah. Facebook fan club that I didn't make. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, wasn't, I didn't secretly make it. And they're so nice. I get so inspired by these folks that don't know me, but they know me yeah. somehow. Uh, because they see uh, me on TV and who I am. And gosh, they pump me up. They get me motivated. I don't want to let them down. They want to see more of me. They want to see my archives. I got big ones. They want to know about Chernobyl. I did Ghost of Chernobyl. We're oh, that's another episode oh, that I want to do. Oh, yeah, that's I said. We're that's this is where, <laughs> like I said, you're you're yeah. so interesting. Your story's so awesome. Uh, I can't wait to do more of these episodes with you. And we'll just we're we're gonna share all your stuff. Let's get it out there. Um, no, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. This Let is us, a lot of fun. Um, where can um, people find find you online or where do you want people to yes. go? Well, uh, do you, um, I don't know if you have a book out or anything like yeah, that. Right. I, I'm working on <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Um, well, on Instagram, I'm at Stone Films Earth, all one word. It's uh, Stone Films Earth. And if you scroll through my stories uh, and my stuff, you're going to see everything I've done in the past, you know, since – well, not 15 years ago, but at least the last 10 years. And it's all major uh, adventure stuff. Mm. Uh, Columbia, Lost City of Gold. Uh, we're talking not finding Nazi bunkers, you know, uh, oh. alien stuff in the Atacana Desert. I mean, just yes. on and on and on and on and on. Um, and, um, and I want to tell more of those stories. And I want to unlock the my archives, which are so huge and tell stories uh, because there's so much that the show does talks about. Yeah. And then it's, then it's all everything else that's on the cutting room floor. It's crazy. Uh, and I don't have the footage and I can't use this stuff, but I do have my archives. I take a lot of photos. I'm always hamming it up. I'm always getting, you know, the expert to tell me something because uh, secretly I want to, you know, have my own show, <laughs> which I'm working on. Um, <laughs> there's, there's, I'm going to show you something what I'm working on right now. Um, cool. Yeah. Um, this is awesome. Behind the scenes is the best. This, um, every, every 
season of Destination Truth, I made these books, right? These are like picture books, right? Oh, cool. Okay. Oh, that's like awesome. This one, Destination Truth, China, US, you know, this is like, and then you and inside the book, you know, is. Oh, I lost your audio. I, I think you unplugged something. Not yet. I'll let you know as soon. There, oh, oh, oh. But, uh, we're back. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're good now. Yeah. Casey Kasem. <laughs> <laughs> and that was there, perfect. Well, yeah, and it's uh, this is just uh, okay. Here's one. Uh, this book is uh, let's see, Bhutan, uh, the Yeti episode of Bhutan pff, is there. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, this one, uh, Israel, Jordan, Easter Island. Oh my goodness. Oh. This is oh. this. And so what I'm going to do is these picture books are already done. What I'm yeah. going to do, and this is the scariest place on earth. It's a, a, a place of the Atacana desert that we uh, stumble upon um, looking for these alien mummies, little tiny mummies, which are crazy. It just a report just came out recently that it's, there are small people that were lived in these caves. Um, it's like Tim Burton movie here. Like it, <laughs> Dude. It's, it's, there's like hold on that's wild hold on you're, you're gonna freak out hold on there is there is like skulls yeah here this is what's coming out of the ground <laughs> oh my god <laughs> what? that's yeah that's wild that's terrifying <laughs> I think it's ghosts there for sure. Uh, oh, books, oh man, books. this one here, Chernobyl. Uh, this is this is the famous. Uh, that's the, the after the expedition where I got blown away by a ghost. And it's just here's some alien mummy shit right there. Wow. Let's look at that. Oh, and in um, South America, there's lots of crazy uh, stuff. Yeah. This, this is um, anyhow. So what I'm doing is I'm making these. I'm gonna re put these out, and I'm gonna have different people from the crew talk about about oh, each cool. episode in their point of view mm -hmm. so uh, oh it's fantastic it might be josh or it might be the song and what they experience which is everyone's point of view is different on stuff and it's really interesting i'm gonna have a it's gonna be a digital audiobook and it's also going to be uh physical books so that's coming out um and then i take um holga you know holga camera it's like an old russian uh, plastic camera that light leaks um, I taken those for the past 15 years, they go on, uh, and so I'm putting those out as well. And, um, yeah, I just want to get out there and tell my story more. And, uh, I like this. I well, like you're always going to be a, a namestay on our platform for sure. I thought this is fantastic. I would love to just randomly like sit down to you next to a, in a bar stool. And just yeah. because oh. you know, we're, we're, we're interesting gotta, interesting person on the planet to talk yeah. to. <laughs> and and all this stuff, I'm a, I'm like a bone collector. Like yeah. all of this stuff behind me is like artifacts that I I I don't take them. I find them. I and I have a rule. I never take anything from graves or caves. Yeah. It, no, don't because why not caves? Because because people it's say very sacred places, caves. Okay. And they anything you find there is is. It shouldn't be taken out. You don't, don't want, want no bad juju. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no I, bad juju. Like I got a funny one here. Hold up. Okay. Like this, this here, I got this from a, a a shipwreck. I got this from a shipwreck dive, and um and it's uh, from eighteen uh, hundreds. And I went down there and uh, I stuffed it in my thing. Like it was a drift dive, it was really uh, a hard dive. I come out all out of breath. I flop on. They're like, "Are you okay?" And I'm trying to get something. What's going on? I pull this out. And I'm like, this somewhere safe. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And I and also uh, it's a really cool thing. Uh, the sound man and I we collect these um, artifacts to spell the word love. And we put okay. them on an old piece of wood, L O V E, um, and with like um, a pottery from the, uh, or little like things that we find. And it's kind of fun to go exploring for something. Like you're going out, I don't know what we're going to do. Let's go find the word love. We need yeah. an L, an O, a V, the E. The E that, could be different things put that's together. That's awesome. And then you put it on some wood and you give it as a gift. Um, I'm really into that. <laughs> well, I think you have the best job on the planet. Yeah, I envy you. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. No, we, we appreciate you for coming out on the show. Um, yeah, just thanks again to everyone for tuning in. Uh, Evan, we're going to have you back uh, for sure. We're going to post <laughs> all your links on, yep. on our show notes. Uh, keep promoting you on, on the Facebook page. I know our fans are going to love it. Um, yeah, so please go out and uh, uh, subscribe to Evan's stuff when we post it out there. Um, and let us know when your books are out because not I will buy one or the set or whatever, yeah, absolutely. whatever you put out there. But we'll definitely publish that because they look really cool. And I love oh, yeah. the show. And uh, so, yeah. yeah. No, right. no, thanks everyone for tuning in. And uh, lastly, when enjoying the beauty of nature, whether backpacking, camping, or simply taking a walk, always remember to leave no trace. Thanks. And we'll see you all next time. <laughs>